Hey guys, this is take two of the project example for the log CSI project. So this example is sitting on your yellow paper. It's on the front side. Um, again, your numbers are going to be different than the numbers in this. So please, if you get the same answer, um, probably did something wrong. But what you're going to do here is, again, you need to show all of your work, which is all of the steps that you use to solve. You can use a calculator. Um, be very careful where you round but I would like to know how many minutes prior to midnight the murder occurred and the approximate time of the murder. So this is kind of like the um, growth and decay questions or the half-life problems, the work problems that you do with logs, because you have to solve this big long equation twice. So the first thing you have to find is k, which is your rate, and then you're going to use that value of k in order to find the time that it's been since that murder. So we talked a little bit about Newton's law of cooling. It basically just says that as a body is uh, more gets more and more dead, they also gets more and more cold. So this is the equation that they use in order to solve murders. I don't know, I guess. But this is how you can model the temperature of the body. So all of these variables can get kind of confusing. All the big T's represent temperature. So this T of T, that's talking about temperature at a specific time. So for this particular case, this is the temperature at time t. Okay, so that t of t just means the temperature after amount of time has passed. This t of e, that is the temperature of the environment, the surrounding temperature, the room temperature, however you want to think about it. And this equation has this particular piece twice. So this t of e and this t of e are the same thing. Okay, so you're going to use that equa or that number twice when you're solving the equation. Okay, this T naught or the T sub zero, that's going to be your initial temperature. So what was the body starting at? And to make a big note here, that initial temperature should always be greater than the temperature after time because the temperature is decreasing. So this number that's over here on the right side of the equation should always be bigger than the left side of the equation. Okay, K is going to be your rate. I oh, know I'm running out of time or space. Okay, K is going to be your rate. Notice that there's a negative built in. So your rate should probably be a positive number. The negative is built in. And then T is just time. So let's look at this situation they gave us. So the coroner arrives at the scene of a murder at 12 a.m. and immediately determines the temperature of the victim to be 93.6 degrees. So that's going to be the temperature at that time. 20 minutes later, be careful with this particular thing. The um, measurements I gave you were actually 30 minutes later. Um, tw 20 minutes later, the temperature has fallen to be 92.8 degrees. If the temperature of the room is 72, so the surrounding temperature is 72 degrees the whole time, when was the murder committed? And we're going to assume that this person didn't have a fever, they were a normal person, not an alien, and so they were 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. So the first thing that we're going to have to do here is we're going to have to find the rate at which the body is getting colder. So the first step is always going to be to find K. And in this case, that's our rate. Again, we used R before, but this is just the way this formula is worded. So we know a couple of pieces of information. I know that the surrounding temperature is going to be 72 degrees. We're assuming that's constant. Okay, the time that has elapsed is going to be 20 minutes. Okay, that was the measurements they gave me. And then this is where it gets a little bit tricky. We know the temperature after 20 minutes, so the T of T, was 92.8. So the other temperature measurement I'm going to use needs to be the bigger one. So T naught, the initial temperature, was when they first found it. So 93.6. Okay, so now I'm just going to plug all of those numbers into that big equation. So I'm going to have 92.8 equals the surrounding temperature plus the initial temperature, 93.6, minus the surrounding temperature. And then it's times E. Remember, that's just a number to the negative K. I don't know what K is, but I do know that the time that's elapsed is 20. Okay, so now this is just a situation where I'm going to need to solve. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract 72 from both sides. I get 20.8. I'm going to add the, well, I guess subtract those two numbers. I get 90, uh, nope, I get 21.6. And then e to the negative 20k, or negative k times 20. 
Okay, but then I'm going to go ahead and divide both sides. I'm trying to isolate my E in this case, so that way I can probably do a log or something. Okay, be careful when you divide these two numbers. I believe that becomes a little bit of a gross decimal. So whenever you're using this number, try to make sure that you're either using the copy-paste feature or you're storing this number somewhere. Don't round. You can round on your paper, but don't round on your calculator. So this number is approximately 0.962 dot 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 dot. It's a big long decimal and that equals to e to the negative 20k. Okay, now I'm trying to get that k out of the exponent, so I have a couple options. I could take the natural log of both sides. I could also go ahead and just rewrite as a log, which is what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna have log base e, the base stays the same, so log base e is natural log, and then these two pieces are gonna switch sides at the equal sign. So I'm gonna have natural log of whatever that big wrong decimal was and that's going to equal to negative 20k. So now in order to get k by itself, I just have to divide both sides by negative 20. So when I go type that into my calculator, I'm going to do natural log, whatever that was, and then I'm going to divide by negative 20. So if you notice here, if my k value is positive, again, your value for k needs to be something that is a positive number. So the value that I got here was pretty small, so 0 0.0018, da, 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 da. Again, make sure that you're copy-pasting this number, or you can store it as a number. So if you want to store it at, or store it as a letter, excuse me. So if you want to store that number, if you press this button right here, the sto right next to the 1, and then you choose whatever letter you want to use. So I'm going to store it as a K. So I'll put that button. And now that number is going to be whenever I type in a K, then I'm going to have that number pop out. So it's kind of nice to do. Um, so now I know what the rate that the body is going down, the temperature is going down at. So now I need to figure out how long it's been since this murder occurred. <laughs> so the thing that we're going to have to find next is the number of minutes since the murder. So murder minutes. I don't know. Minutes. And that's going to be a T value. So it's going to be in time. So again, the temperature of the room didn't change. The temperature of the room is still 72. Um, we know the K value now. You just said K was that really long decimal. And again, you can round it on your paper, but don't round it in your calculations. Now here's where it gets a little bit tricky because I know that the temperature after the murder, so at, as a, after a certain amount of time, I don't know how much time that was, but the temperature when they found the body was 93.6, okay? What the temperature should have been or what the temperature was at the time of the murder is then normal body temperature. Again, we're going to assume this person was not ill and they were also a person, not an alien. Okay, so these are the numbers that we're going to plug into here. And remember, the T of T should be smaller than your T initial, your T naught. So let's plug all of this into that lovely equation. So we're going to have 93.6 is equal to 72 plus 98.6. Again, this is your what the body was supposed to be. And then E to the negative K. So again, the negative is built in. So you are going to use a negative now but your K itself should have been positive, and then I don't know the time. I'm gonna be solving this for a time. So now I'm just gonna do some more algebra and solve this out. So I subtract 72 from both sides, I get 21.6. If I subtract that on the inside, I get 26.6. E to the, and I'm gonna be really lazy, and I'm just gonna write K, T, because I don't wanna keep writing that decimal out. Um, and so then again, I'm gonna divide both sides by that 26.6 and then take the natural log. So I'm gonna have some ugly number, 21.6 divided by 26.6, .6. nope, that's 266. That gets me 0 0.8 something, one, two, dot, 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 equals e to the negative kt. And again, I can take the natural log of both sides. And so in order to solve this for t, I'm gonna divide both sides by negative k. So again, my k value was that decimal. I'm gonna round it on my paper, but not in my calculator. I'm just gonna write k so it looks like it goes away. And I'm gonna find the natural log of whatever I just used. And then I'm gonna take that number 
and I'm going to divide it by negative k. Be careful here. Again, the formula accounted for that negative. So I get that the time that's elapsed oops, was 110 point something minutes. So filling out this bottom part, the murder occurred 110 minutes prior to midnight. So now I want to figure out what that time is. I know um, this is going to sound silly because you're like, I know this, but there are 60 minutes and one hour. And so if 110 minutes has passed, then you have one whole hour's gone and then 50 minutes. So we had one hour, 50 minutes, and one hour, 50 minutes prior to midnight would be at 10, 10 p.m. So hopefully uh, your suspect that is the murderer is going to have that time free that, that I wouldn't have an alibi for that one. Okay, so that's how you do this math. Um, if you want to earn your bonus points, again a bonus point, you're going to write down the color that pops up and you're going to write it on the math, next to the math part of the rubric on your yellow paper. Uh, if you have any questions, just let me know. See ya.